Good afternoon, I'm Stacey Ann Providence and C News is live at noon. And I'm Nasira Mohammed with Sport. The Ministry of Health says a shipment of cancer medication will be arriving during the week of September 1st to the 7th for immediate distribution. And a further shipment of medication will arrive during the second half of September. It says the procurement of these two shipments has been facilitated by the emergency funding which Cabinet approved on July 14th. The Ministry said all cancer patients have been treated with second-line medication, are stable and are being closely monitored. This after several reports of a shortage of cancer medication at health institutions throughout the country. Well, the United National Congress will meet with Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley on Friday at his office in Sinclair to discuss the crime situation. Yesterday, Dr. Rowley accepted an offer made by the opposition leader to meet in what's been described as a non-partisan dialogue on combating serious crime. Dr. Rowley asked for an outline of what will be discussed by the end of today, and UNC Chairman Dr. David Lee said the party is in the process of putting things in place. Today we are preparing based on the communication that we received. A letter will be going out to the Prime Minister today accepting his offer to meet. And we'll also be caucusing with the members of Parliament and Senators to come up with on our agenda and, um, and objectives and initiatives. Um, so when we do meet with the Prime Minister, it's, you know, it's one voice we have um, with the opposition leader. Now at the UNC Monday Night Forum yesterday, the opposition leader said her team can show the government how to solve the crime problem. She said more than 430 people have been murdered since September 7, 2015, and not one conviction under Dr. Rowley's administration. The police are investigating the shooting death of 41-year-old Antonio Cyrus. Reports say at around 10.30 last night, the victim was at his Mount Hope Road, Mount Hope home when he was recalled out by someone known to him. Sea News understands shortly after he exited his house, several explosions were heard and residents said they saw a car speeding off. Cyrus was found lying in a pool of blood on the roadway and he later died. Well, the opposition leader is asking what the government has done with $59 billion since it took office in 2015. Kamala Prasad Bissessa said the PNM government continues to blame the People's Partnership for its troubles, claiming it ran up the overdraft and wasted the country's money. However, she said despite this, the government bought paintings for several million dollars and refused to pay families of police officers killed while on duty. We left. $65 billion in foreign reserves. We left more than $30 billion in the Heritage and Stabilization Fund. And they've done all of this. They haven't been able to pay the policemen their full back pay. They talk about fighting crime. The Prime Minister comes to the Parliament and talks about fighting crime and the morale of the police service. And up to today, they have not paid the family of any single police officer who was killed in the line of duty. She called on the Prime Minister to give an account of his government spending. I ask the Rowley government, show us where you've spent. The budget year is done, the 59 billion, plus the money you raided from the HSF, and the money you're continuing to borrow, they will have to account to the population what have they done. And opposition leader Kamala Prasad Basesa is warning of more job losses if the People's National Movement wins the local government election. On Monday, the United National Congress held a public meeting in the Mayoral constituency to launch their local government election campaign entitled, What Matters Most? Mrs. Prasad Basesa said before the PNM won the 2015 general election, the economy was booming and people had a sense of hope. Now, she says, all that is gone. They want to audit everything. They talk about restructuring, and the whole purpose of the auditing and restructuring, you know what? Is to fire people for people to lose their jobs. Let's keep our eye on that. Should they gain control of this Mayaro Rio Claro Corporation, there will be hundreds of jobs lost, hundreds of families to suffer. We must make sure it does not happen. The opposition leader also announced the UNC's candidates for the Mayaro Rio Claro Regional Corporation. They are Glen Ram for Bish Taruma, Carmen Panchu, Kokal Mafiking for the Electoral District of Ecclesville is Shafiq Mohammed, Mayor Guayaguari Raymond Kozier, 
Rio Claro North, Hazari Ramdin, and Rio Claro South, Cats Hill, Busham, Rampasad. Now, a date for the local government election is yet to be set. Well, the Ministry of National Security is looking for further help for pathologist Valerie Alexandrov. On Monday, the ministry posted an advertisement on its Facebook page asking people with the relevant qualifications to apply for the post of forensic pathologist. And recently, Dr. Alexandrov opted not to conduct any autopsies, saying he was being overworked and called on the authorities to get help. Well, this is CNews Live report at noon. Remember, for more on these and other stories, you can visit our Facebook and Twitter pages at CNews Live, and you can also visit our website at ctvtt.com. In other news now, head of the Clico Shareholders Alliance, David Walker, says he's not sure what exactly the purpose of audits into the insurance company is if no legal recourse will follow. Mr. Walker has questioned why a second audit valued at $90 million was necessary in the first place. Who commissioned it? Who decided that spending $90 million on a new audit would achieve something that had not previously been achieved? And if so, what is that something that was meant to be achieved? Because you don't spend $90 million without understanding what it is you're trying to achieve. He said the main cause of the company's downfall is the lack of accountability. It is clearly the case that most of the goings-on have occurred behind closed doors and with a deliberate decision and which has been implemented by both administrations, so this is not about either party, to conceal things from the public. So we every so often get to find out about something else. And he objected to government's close affiliation with the matter, predicting if the host of concerns that have surfaced are not resolved, it will affect consumer investment across the board. In an environment where you want people to invest in your financial institutions, having what is effectively a threat over the institutions that in the event of any turbulence in the market that renders them vulnerable, the likelihood is that the government will simply come and take over the institution and tell you what you will get for your money, regardless of the worth of the assets. And the President of India has sent greetings to Trinidad and Tobago one day before independence. Pranab Mukherjee wrote to President Anthony Carmona saying, on behalf of the people of India, it is with great pleasure that I convey to you and the government of Trinidad and Tobago warm greetings on the eve of your national day. He said both countries have traditionally been warm and friendly and he's confident the bilateral ties can become stronger in the future. Well, the school feeding program is to benefit from contributions from local farmers. Agricultural economist Umadat Maraj says that this can only be beneficial to the agriculture industry. Cabinet would have made its decision and advised the school nutrition program that it must use greater local content in the school meals a month ago. Farmers and fishers from the Table and Pineapple Farmers Association and the Felicity Charleville Fishing Association think it's a very important move, not only in terms of the fact that we're getting the content into the school feeding program, but the change in philosophy. Mr. Maraj believes there should be an awareness program devised to ensure that those benefiting from it are made aware of the advantages they gain. The wise that we believe should be encouraged to participate in this vision because we don't want the children to feel as if eating local is some form of punishment and isolation and so on. It's really to spread that vision across the country. And it's expected that the school feeding program will involve farmers in the procurement process as they all work to feed the nation's children. So some good news now, a red brocket deer fawn was yesterday rescued and will soon be put into a private animal sanctuary. According to members of Wildlife Environmental Protection of Trinidad and Tobago, Joey was discovered alone and crying in the forest in the Maracas. He was taken home by members of the group and will be raised and fostered by other deer in a private animal sanctuary. And here's a look at what's taking place in the region. The Bahamas Minister of Tourism has said the increasing number of warnings on the Zika virus coming from the Caribbean region could create a negative perception of Caribbean countries if the number of people infected with the virus continues to rise. He said, although there is currently no evidence to suggest that visitors' arrival in the Caribbean have been affected in response to the presence of the Zika virus, there is still a need to adopt the simple theory that prevention is better than cure. 
The Guild of Students at the University of the West Indies Kiev Hill campus is stepping up its efforts to assist students who need help with paying their tuition fees. The president of the Guild said the representative body had approved $22,000 for 44 grants at $500 each to registered students with a minimum grade point average of 2.5. It is said the money would be paid directly to the students' accounts of successful applicants who are required to apply in order to be considered. Guyana is to begin testing for the polio virus to prevent the resurgence of the disease. Public Health Minister Dr. George Norton said although Guyana has maintained a polio-free status since 1962, he believed that the time has come to heighten surveillance against the potentially deadly disease. The virus spreads from person to person and can invade an infected person's brain and spinal cord, causing muscle wasting and paralysis. In St. Lucia now, the discovery of six kilograms of cocaine hidden in food produce shipped to Britain has put St. Lucia in the spotlight and the government has now come forward stating its full support for a drug investigation. A search of the 93-box consignment by British Border Force officers identified approximately 6.8 kilograms of cocaine concealed inside nine hollowed-out breadfruits. British law enforcement were praised for the find. Well, Nasira Mohammed is here to tell us what's happening in the world of sport today. It's all international, Stacey. England record goal scorer Wayne Rooney will retire from international football after the 2018 World Cup in Russia. The Manchester United forward was speaking to the media for the first time since New England manager Sam Allardyce confirmed he would keep the 30-year-old as his captain. Rooney, who has scored 53 goals in 115 England appearances, said he feels good that, will be, that it will be the time to say goodbye to international football. More than 100 Russian athletes have written to the International Paralympics Committee asking to, to, to compete at the Games in Rio. Russia was banned by the IPC after the McLaren report identified evidence of a state-sponsored doping program. The decision to ban Russia from the Games was upheld last week by the Court of Arbitration for Sport, but the Russian Paralympic Committee says Scores of athletes are challenging that decision. And on to news of tennis now, world number one Novak Djokovic began his U.S. Open campaign with victory over Poland's Jersey Janowicz, despite the serve requiring treatment on his arm. Djokovic, who has struggled with a wrist injury, won 6-3, 5-7, 6-2, 6-1, after calling with trainer in the first set. Spanish fourth seed Rafael Nadal beat Uzbekistan's Denis Istomin 6-1, 6-4, 6-2, and Germany's Angelique Kerber, seeded second in the women's draw, led, Poland, led Polana Hercog 6-0-1-0 when the Slovenians succumbed to leg scrams. And that's what we have for sports today, Stacey Ann. Thank you, Nasira. <laughs> Let's take a look now at what we have in the weather. The wet season carries on and so far the rain gauge at Piaco is at 220 millimeters. Usually expect 260 at this time of the year. And we could be seeing a bit more added to that rain gauge with cloudiness around at times, breaking up the sunshine and occasional showers, possibly turning heavy or thundery as you go through the day. Look for a humid 32 degrees Celsius in Tobago and a 34 degrees Celsius in Trinidad. From around us heading out, look for easterly winds of 15 to 20 knots with seas of 1.5 to 2 meters and easterly swells of 6 seconds. High tide at 2 is followed by a low tide at 8. That's the latest weather and I'm meteorologist Ian Wallace. And let's take a look now at some international news. A lightning strike is set to be the cause of the death of 300 reindeer in Norway. And it's reported that 70 calves and 5 reindeer had to be put down because they were severely injured in the storm. Now the incident took place at Hagen Davidar, a mountain plateau in southern Norway. And that's it for the C News Live at noon. C News, powered by our team of journalists and producers across the Republic and the region, on television, radio, and online. C News, your news, your country, our job.